it. All I know is what I read and meant to believe, um, which I don't. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, there's endless hack phrases like dumbing down and all the rest of it. We're, in fact, there's everything to sort of demoralise anyone who's trying to do anything in society. And what I've, I've found out, nothing else being I share, is it's just nonsense. People are highly motivated and give of their best. And I haven't come across anything that's second best, really. No. And um, is the curriculum being sort of ratcheted up? I mean, I'm sure... I mean, are you given by the government, you've got to have achieved, who is it that sets the um, standards? It's well, supposedly, Michael Gove overall in charge, and yeah. then what happens is that they, each of the examination boards will have their own schemes of work and their own syllabuses, and that's where we've each had... Each of the, the examination? The exam boards are the ones that have that power and do you to keep decide which exam board you select? Yeah, we, yeah, we yeah. can choose it from the game board, yes. Choice of one, five, six... Two, three. For English, it's a choice of three. Three? Yes. Yeah. And, and there's not a huge yeah, amount of difference. There's, 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 there's not a huge amount of, of difference between them. I think sometimes when these things are being discussed in the media, it makes it sound it's like there's lots and lots of choice. But there's um, not much choice. No, and there will be even less in the future. I mean, that, that's the way things are, that are going. But I agree with you that it's very rare that you'd actually meet someone that doesn't want to give of their best. That's right. Mm -hmm. And if they're actually working with some of the uh, most challenging pupils, the most deprived that's students, right. they're the ones that should actually be encouraged because they're the ones who are going to have to make the difference. Well, that's what fires people up. Is, uh, it's most, uh, well, it's the most exciting thing I would imagine to teach people because it's, you know, it's like having a young racehorse, you know, if it gets better and better, it's jolly exciting, mm -hmm. you know. And if you can get people to surpass the, themselves in terms of what they think they can achieve, I mean, you, you get lift off. Mm -hmm. yeah. Them and us, the, you know, the teachers of the enemy, you're, you know, and all that. And you actually walk a little bit down the same track together. Definitely. That's and that's yeah. when you are being led out. Yeah. You yourself are leading yourself out with someone. You yeah. find that with the older students, especially, they, yeah. they realise that, that you're on their side and you're not trying to That's right. ruin things for them. Definitely. And more people, I'm sure, now actually enjoy education. You know, if you can get that breakthrough, the sky. Now, some of the things of what's happened over the last ten years and the things that are coming up in the future, you can just tell from looking at the numbers how much the school has um, improved and evolve, and what a stark contrast it is, looking over just a period of a little bit more than 10 years, how the uh, results have improved dramatically. Um, the number of students that we have attending the academy has risen dramatically, um, and students that we have on roll that are attending most of the time when they should be. Um, I know Mrs King makes quite light work of the improvements that she's done, but it is something to go from 11% to 100% in a short space of time. <laughs> it's, not, it's, not, it's not easily done, and it is a lot of hard work, determination, and effort. Um, but what we the attendance still figure? What the attendance? That's, what does that mean, attendance? Uh, turning up to school every day like they're supposed to. So 5%? They've, they've had spinal operations, and they may be a great woman on the street, or there's issues with wheelchairs and things like that. Um, but but not autism or... Uh, we have, we well, have that's special needs, isn't it? Yes, but we have children here uh, that are autistic. We have uh, a large yeah. number of children here that uh, have um, uh, ADHD, um, attention deficit disorder. Yeah. Um, that is a wreck, and that, what it, that just means they can't... They can't sit still, but they're very so, long. No. Yeah. Uh, but again, if you know that, it's not a surprise, then uh, and, and the one thing that my colleagues are, are very, very good at is making sure you have lessons and, and activities that actually yes. engage those children over a long yes. period of time. Um, we're all mildly OCD. That's the start. <laughs> I, I lead on that one. I like things organised and yes. <laughs> formal and done properly. <laughs> um, yeah, I think we've all got So I think we've all got, we're all on a spectrum of some sort. Yes. <laughs> not that sorry. Um, these are a couple of pictures of like how the schools evolved physically as well. Mm -hmm. So um, when you drove up this morning, that's that's what it used to look like a few years ago, just for your parked mm -hmm. car. 
um, but the roundabout has, has come out and it's uh, the front of the school has all been built out and extended mm -hmm. primarily to cope with the increasing number of students that we've had um, but we don't when we add something new to the school we don't have one area that looks fantastic and another one that we just let be as it mm. is everything has to be in the same standard so mm. we try to bring everything up to the standard that we're in now which is like a professional office environment and the corridors we're just walking down is another example so the whole school is carpeted throughout which is quite rare in a secondary school um, do you know you were talking about earlier about people that try things every time i try something people tell me not to do it so mm. don't lay carpets they will spoil them don't build buildings with glass roofs they will smash them Yes. Don't put nice toilets in, they will yes. break them. No. And actually, uh, if you truly believe that's what people deserve and you train them yeah. how to use it, um, and then follow up if there are any problems, because yeah. you know, it's the, yeah. occasionally there's problems, it means that we do have a school where we don't have litter, we don't have graffiti, we don't have chewing gum, which just means it's a nicer place to be. Absolutely, I mean, no, it must be. Um, and everyone's really on board with doing that which is fantastic, mm -hmm. it makes it such a nice place to be. Well, I think that's probably one of the biggest achievements in the fact that um, that's what the staff and students want to be able to do mm -hmm. because it can't just be about one person or one team. It yeah. is how they we can reflect on their own performance and look at how they actually move forward. Yes. And at that point, it can become really exciting because all sorts of things then become possible because you're not dragging people along and making them do something. But the parents must be so proud of it. Uh, they are, and in, in fact, um, we were only to talk about it yesterday, the number of parents are actually saying, I wish I could come back to school now, I wish I had had those chances, exactly. which is very nice, but it's also yes. quite sad in a way it that, is, that, 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 that they've it actually is, missed out. It is, isn't it, that they, people have missed out? We, obviously we'd had a huge amount of success and the exam results were going up, but we still felt that there was more that our students were capable of doing, but it needed a different approach. And originally we were going to work with the local authority and we were going to um, host the pre-vocational centre for this part of Thurrock. Unfortunately, when we became an academy, all of that fell through and they didn't want to work with us anymore. But we were so keen on this idea of bringing business and employment, uh, employers into the area that we went on, on the hunt and, and basically I just kept moaning about it until someone said to me, there's something called Studio School, there's only two in the country, I don't know what they're like but you may be interested and that's where it, it grew You're from. Um, I went and, and met the Chief Executive uh, in, in London um, in his temporary accommodation and behind him he had a, a map of Britain on the wall and he had two red dots which were the ones that had been opened and then there were a, a, a small number of black dots and I said I, w I want to be one of those dots because there's nothing in the south east of England at the moment I want to be one of those There's not a single uh, studio? There wasn't at the time Now since then there is uh, a studio school up at, in Clacton mm. around the tendering yes, area Yes I've seen that and uh, there's another one in Fulham there's mm. a boys school, boys catholic school that opened um, but it's still relatively new. I think uh, uh, we were one of 12 that went through. Mm. So what was interesting about that is that during the journey, our understanding about what we felt our students needed actually changed. So rather than it being an introduction to brick lane or introduction to motor vehicle, what we actually saw, what it, it was the fact that everybody needed to have academic excellence. They need the English and maths. You can't yeah. get away from it. It's got to be there. But what else does business and employers want? And they want those employ uh, employability skills. They want that uh, young people to be work ready. Mm -hmm. And so we did quite a lot of work with it, which is why working along with Christian, we put quite a unique uh, combination of things together. So students are expected to get the very top grades. Mm -hmm. And they're expected to do a whole host of other things, which will mean that they are totally work ready when they get there, whenever that may be. And many of them are looking to go to universities, be doctors, engineers, going to the army, all sorts of things. But when they get there, they will actually have a, a much better understanding of the world in which they're going into. Yes. And of all the things that I've ever worked on within education, what has surprised me most is that I don't have to explain it to parents. Parents and students get it. You need yeah. qualifications, but you need to be work ready. 
You need yes. both. It's not yes. and yes. or no, because no, it's no, not no. going to work. No, you can't sit back just with a with a sort of few degrees sticking out of your hip pocket. You've actually got to be right there. Yeah. yeah. Um, what, and you've had the companies in, have you? I mean, or be leaders or people we're, we're from... We're starting to. That's where we're actually going there. So this idea of, of how we actually approach uh, the studio school. And the idea is for the studio school, we will do all the experimental work there. And what works, we'll bring straight over into the main academy. Yeah. Because if it so works, it's a continuum. That's yeah. what I'm hoping. That's what yes. we're trying to build, that energy. Yes, yes. Just to how, how did so... I'm 16, do I automatically go up on into the studio school if I want to, or...? No, they, it's, um, there's, two, there's t on two occasions when you can join the studio school. You can join at 14, yeah. or you can join at 16. If you join at 16, it would be like looking at any other post-16 provision. You'd go and I have see. a look, and then see whether it uh, actually it's fits it's your needs. Yeah. Because it, it wouldn't be right for everybody. No. Um, but there are enough people that are interested in that way of working that uh, we think we can make a success of it and have convinced the, the, the Department of Education that we can make a success of it. I mean, you've got 500 people here. Uh, we have just under 1,000 now. 1,000? Just under 1,000. That's a big number. Yeah. So, and they're here for how long? They're here for uh, between 11 and 16. 11 and 16, so that's five years, so that's 200 a year. Mm are exiting the building. Is that roughly it? Yeah. But if you extend it to 19, because yeah. um, none of the... Are, are you expecting some outside people to come in from 16 to 19 from, say, other schools who yeah, want yeah. to go to we think that We think they will, but in the first instance quite a few of them will be our own. But the DfE are very clear. We can only take a maximum of 75 in each year group. Oh, that's so, their so, 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 yes. Yes, because what they don't want to do is have lots of duplication, which you know makes sense. Yes. Um, and it's got to be economically viable. So they're the sorts of things. Um, now, obviously, how do they make it economically viable? They expect me to do that. I have to do the costings on uh, what income we can generate, how long it's going to take me to phase in. The but students. how do you generate income from it? I mean, from um, students are worth money, uh, a certain amount of money. So whether they're worth four thousand pounds or four and a half thousand pounds. Well, by making so a by person making it into a student, yeah. that is we whatever. Would, we would get you funding. get some you get some funding. Oh, I see. Yeah, got it. And they're tested to to a, uh, to see make sure they are what worth will, whatever they well, are. What will happen? You'll have a chance to actually see those in one. Yes. Um, <coughs> so it's just. Yeah, the, the, the sixth form starts, our first intake is in September, next yes. September, um, and that's when we'll, we'll then have uh, another additional intake of Year 10 students, which is the start of GCSEs. The reason we've had to stagger it is that we simply don't have the accommodation. Well, here. I so I, I have to wait. I have to no. Yeah, it's going to be done by the last week in July, so we'll be okay. <laughs>